tell you, we may have some of these risk areas going to upgrade. The meteorologists out of, you know, the Birmingham DMA are concerned about the threat of tornadoes, damaging winds, and of course, every rain. Okay, so from the way the Weather Channel was making it sound like earlier, they're going to start in East Texas, by the way, in Mississippi. I think if they do up the risk, it's probably going to be from the Natchez Trace, which is in southwest Mississippi, or from the town of Natchez, to maybe northwest Alabama. It's probably going to be enhanced, if not moderate. I know the last event. Today? Okay. <sighs> yeah, we, I'm talking about November 16th. They kept it enhanced, and we had some long track tornadoes with that event. <sighs> then the longest one, I think, was in Kansas. It was on the ground for about 51 miles. Touched down north of Liberal to south east of Montezuma, which was southwest of Dodge City, with the Weather Service offices out there, on the one that covers southwest Kansas. Well, there is less where the Wichita office covers, I mean, serves. But let me go ahead and read you Wednesday's outlook. I would not be shot within the next hour and a half if they upped it to enhance. Okay, because Wednesday seems like it's going to be pretty bad. And this is uh, going to be on the same date the tornado destroyed Columbia last year. It was an EF3 and it killed like. Two people, I think, down there in Marion County, Mississippi. Heck. But the light risk for now goes from north central Louisiana, from like Monroe to about Memphis to Tupelo, Columbus to Huntsville to maybe Pickensville. Oh, yeah, Hamilton's then. Hamilton to around like Hatt maybe Hattiesburg. Oh no, definitely Jackson. Yeah, Jackson points south to like the Louisiana border. It goes from like areas north of New Orleans. And the slight risk is probably going to get extended eastward to include, you know, Birmingham, Sulcaga, you know, Anderson, Gadsden area. Okay, this is kind of outdated. This is, you know, Put out like two, three thirty my time this morning. Okay, from okay, let me tell you how the meteorologists in the Birmingham market was talking about. They're saying the the, the tornado parameters were you know pretty high, probably over like West Alabama, which. Definitely ain't good. We could have some supercells that, you know, form. Because yeah, sort of on, like, November 16th developed, we had supercells. And they were long-tracked. I remember the Pampa, the storm that started out in the Texas Panhandle, hit a, I think, went south of Gage, Oklahoma. Caused damage in Fort Supply. And I think when the Southwest Kansas. Oh boy. But this may be my problem Christmas Eve if they saw them told together. Okay. Okay, upper air forcing for ascent becomes increasingly unclear in the wake of the early activity southward toward the Gulf Coast. However, lingering. Weak mid-level inhibition coupled with surface heating, perhaps weak low-level warm advection may allow for discrete storm development Wednesday afternoon across parts of northeastern Louisiana and southwestern Mississippi. This should mostly be aligned along west of the lingering 40 to 50 knots, southerly 850, 850 millibar jet axis, which will contribute to favorable shear. The supercells capable of producing tornadoes Gosh. and may track across parts of south central and through eastern Mississippi and western Alabama through until early evening. Uh, more. 
I wonder if we'll see any long-lasting tornadoes. That's a question that's really going on in the back of my mind right now. Okay. Because there are still on some uncertainties until... Okay, the marginal rest goes in the western parts of my state and uh, most of east central Georgia. So that might be something I need to pay attention to Wednesday night and the Christmas Eve. So, okay, let me tell you how last year's event worked. Storms fired in northeast Louisiana. They moved into Mississippi. There were, there were some pretty big hailstorms out there in northeast Louisiana. I remember... You know, before I left the house to go somewhere, I heard a storm, I think, Catahoula and Franklin Parish had, you know, a town small size hail with it. And there, that was mainly a severe one storm. The, I was, you know, out of the house when the trail hit in Columbia, but I knew the damage was bad from the way, you know, I they were talking about it on my, on my Facebook feeds, but. This is on the exact same day as that event. December 23rd, 2014. Produced the last, you know, killer tornadoes of that year. Yeah, we had some pretty strong ones near uh, Valdosta on the 29th, I think. But that was only an EF2, and it was mainly over Will Harris of, the, you know, Lanier County. So it really didn't hit anything. Hmm. Now let me talk about tomorrow so that I wouldn't be something that I got upgraded either. This appears to be an East Texas Arklatex problems. Well, at least that's where it's going to start out. I would not be shot if they both got upgraded to enhanced, maybe. Wednesday getting upgraded to moderate. <sighs> Come on. F this, I'm using this. This is the mouse I'm using. Uh, you know, I'll control this since the pattern isn't working too well. Okay. It appears to be like. <sighs> McAllister, yeah. McAllister, Oklahoma, down to the Metroplex in southwestern Arkansas, like, I think around Mena. And, you know, Little River County, points north to around maybe Fort Smith, or it's a little bit south of Fort Smith. Heavenly does not include Tulsa, but. Yeah. They're talking about severe surface-based supercells. They're going to be more likely and large-scale support. Will be more favorable for the convection. Isolated tornadoes will be possible with any discrete near-surface-based supercells. Otherwise, damaging winds and perhaps some hail are the primary thoughts for tomorrow. There was 700 Z. That's not too much longer for the next, you know, outlook. Okay, this is mainly going to be because of the cold front. It's a pretty strong cold front because it's uh, causing problems in Colorado right now. It's about to start causing problems. But I know the system is dynamic because I'm seeing severe warnings. I saw one in southeast Idaho. And they got winter storm warnings up there right now. And I've occasionally seen a tornado warning in central Louisiana. I think Mobile has a severe thunderstorm warning out from Mobile and Baldwin counties in southwestern Alabama right now. This one's coming in off the Gulf. So this is kind of, you know, kind of a dynamic little system. Probably going to cause some problems in the next 48, 72 hours for, you know, Dixie Alley. But what do you expect? We're in that November, December tornado season. So they're not uncommon. This is the second year that this has happened, you know, before Christmas that I can personally remember. Hopefully this one doesn't 
kill people, but who knows? I hope not, because we haven't had, you know, fatality since May, so it's been a little bit over six months since we've had fatality, but, you know. Ooh, shit. Yeah, well, that ain't good. Yeah, we've only had ten people get killed by tornadoes here in the U.S. this year, so that's better than last year. I think the fatalities this year have been, most of the fatalities this year have been related to flooding. I know 17 people died in my state during the flood back in October. I forgot how many died during the Memorial Day floods in South Texas, but... I know there are fatalities, and people lost their homes. Oh, boy. I would not be shot of that up, got up to cat 3, and I wouldn't be shot of, you know, once I got up to cat 4, cat 3 or 4, because of the dynamics that are coming together. There could be a squall line. Supercell is firing up ahead of the line. It's happened before. South Mississippi. Well, basically all I'm telling you is, especially if you live in the Birmingham Metro, have one of these on standby. I bought this prior to the flood and it's woken me up. I think I got woke up one morning by a flood warning for Richland County because of a dam. A supposed dam breach that was later confirmed to be false. Okay, this was like back in October. I know it was like that Tuesday, so it's probably, like, I can't remember the date I heard that go off, but I know I was sleeping and the alarm on this thing was so loud. Okay, so basically the time frame is going to be from either maybe noon, 3 or 4 p.m. to midnight. Tornadoes, damaging straight line winds, and some hell are going to be possible, if not likely, with these storms that develop. It's something to keep in mind, keep these on standby, make sure you got batteries for them. I know, I know we could use uh, Christmas wonder for something else, but my favorite box for this is saved. It's you know caught my attention a couple of times. So I don't know if y'all watch any of my videos or not, but I've got some pretty interesting stuff on there. On us flooding like dam failures, flood emergencies, that sort of stuff. But yeah. Basically, stay weather where Tuesday and Wednesday. Basically, if you live from East Texas to East Alabama, watch the storms, you know, third Wednesday and Tuesday and tomorrow Wednesday. Maybe West Georgia and parts of my state Wednesday night and the Thursday morning. So I'm definitely turning this on overnight, Wednesday night. In case any tornado warnings get issued, I got warning. If I got a, if it's like the Johns Island tornado where it's actually confirmed by debris signature, I'm ready. I'm ready to move. I'm ready to get to a safe place. It's something to keep in mind. I'll keep you posted for when the risk is upgraded. I'm, I'm, it's highly likely that they will. I'm fairly confident about that.